Hey everybody, how you doing out there? I'm Amy, this is uh, Our Conspiracy, and uh, what I want to talk about today is not judging your work too harshly or too soon. Um, I have a whole pile of what I call sort of my reject pile. It's work I did that uh, I thought was a disaster <laughs> at some point and I just like put it aside. But so often, you know, I revisit this pile and I'll find something that it's like, wow, that's, that's got a lot of potential. You know, you're, you're, you are your own worst critic and that is true. Um, so just suspend disbelief a little, little bit. And um, sometimes with a little uh, mixed media, uh, you can do amazing things on top of work that you think is uh, lost or a disaster. So that's the, the topic today. And I want to show you um, what I am talking about. Okay, so here is my disaster. <laughs> and it, it does look pretty disastrous, but there's a lot of great stuff going for this piece. I love the palm trees. Anyway, let me show you real quickly um, where this image came from. Uh, you see the girl on the left, she's a little fuzzy on the right. This is my, my girl in curlers who shows up in a lot of my work. And here she is sitting by the pool. This is called reception because I think of her, her hair rollers as like satellite dishes. Um, and she's hearing, you know, through her curlers. Here she is by the pool. Another one, she, she shows up in a lot of work. So I was playing around. Oh, and, and this is also uh, my motels. I'm sort of obsessed with old 60s motels. So this is this image of this motel and this hair curler girl is what this watercolor was about. It's a very, very early watercolor when I was just learning um, to you know, use the medium. Anyway, I, I, again, put this in my reject pile and I saw it today and I thought, you know what? I, she's in there. I, she's in there and, and the motel's in there. I really like the, um, the palm trees, these swirly green and these little shapes. So anyway, I have some tricks up my sleeve. I have some ideas of how I'm gonna fix this and I'm gonna share it with you. So let me change the pin and I will get to it. Okay, so here it is. And I have some plan, mostly uh, it's add some darks and add some lights. So I'm gonna start with the darks. Um, I'm using marker right on top of colored paper. I mean, excuse me, on top of watercolor. Okay, so I have a nice dark image here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give a little bit of perspective to this sign here. So I'm gonna make it stick out. So I'm gonna pull this out a little bit. There we go. So it's a little bit stronger. And honestly, uh, this is the motel sign, this is M-O-T-E-L. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that yet. I'm gonna add a little more shading under here. Also kind of makes my palm trees pop out a little bit. There we go. Um, I'm gonna indicate a little bit more architecture back here. I'm just gonna make a little line to indicate that. And also there's like a planner box here. So I'm being pretty brave as usual about how I'm gonna do this. Now you're probably wondering about my girl. She's definitely in the dark. So I'm gonna use a white pit pen. It's one of my favorite tools. This is a Faber-Castell and it's basically a fat white marker. So um, I know where my light source is. It's coming from the right. And so I'm gonna kind of redraw her using some light medium. Reintroduce some white areas that will be her skin tones. Good. And I might even change the angle of her arm slightly because it's threatening to go out of the composition. She's got a nose in there. She's got her curlers. Okay. Just gonna let her 
come back out into the world. Okay, now I'm gonna add some darker tones to the side of this architecture. And marker on top of watercolor is really great because it's transparent like watercolor can be. So it blends right into the watercolor. You don't really see it. Or you can see through it, let's put it that way. You can darken and you can do this very quickly too, which I think is fun. So I created sort of more dimension here. And also uh, I want this to pop out a little. So I'm gonna put some in here. I want my little white lines to pop out a little bit more. Okay, doing good. I know my lady looks, still looks pretty bad, huh? Don't panic. She just needs a nose. She needs a mouth and she needs her chin to be Oh, I'm so sorry, my head's in the way. Dang. Okay, I remember not to do that. Okay, I'm gonna have her hold a martini glass too. Let me just put that in there. Okay, good. Looking good. Okay, now I'm gonna use my Presto Whiteout. Gotta have a test sheet, make sure it's flowing. And then I'm gonna pop out her nose side of her face, that bottom lip, move a little bit at the top lip, give her definition. Oh yeah. Oh, now she's looking good. Okay. And these curlers are going to be pink. So I'm going to just Lay that in. Let's give her some earrings here. A little bit of life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this little glass is going to be light. Oh, maybe I need to have the stem coming through the bottom. There we go. Just holding her martini glass. Maybe I got some liquid in here. Put in there. This whiteout dries really fast, too. Now, while that's drying, I want to show you, I'm going to change the sky. One of the things that I like is the transparency of the screen. So I want the sky to be flat. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of acrylic paint, which is more opaque. And this is phthalo blue, which is pretty strong. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is it the right color? No, I think it's a little bit too dark. So I'm going to add a little bit more white. Super strong color. Sometimes you got to play with your mixture to get it the right shade. Try this. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna pause the video. And after I get some more of this on, you can catch up with me. Be right back. Okay, and we're back. So check this out. Uh, I'm gonna, it's a little shiny, so I'm gonna hold it up for you. You can see it's opaque. So I like that sky now and down here, I just took some of that opaque color and I put it on in kind of a patchy way. So some of the old sky is showing through and also around the edges. So when I make these kind of corrections, I don't necessarily get rid of all the old stuff. I let the old stuff stay. Okay, so now we got our lady, our whiteout is already dry because it's super quick. So I'm gonna go in with pink and I'm gonna go right over top of that white out and make these rollers pink. Look at that. Oh yeah. Okay, there we go. And maybe her nose is a little bit pink. And I'm looking at her face, it's still a little gray. 
So if this doesn't do the job, which it might, keep going over, maybe sometimes it takes a couple layers. I can come in with a Chinese white. Oh yeah, look at her. She's looking gorgeous. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, so let's let that dry. Oh, I also want to sculpt her glasses just a tiny bit more. So I'm going to make that middle part a little bit more specific. Maybe indicate where her eyebrows would show up. There we go. And then also within the glasses, I'm going to add a little more reflection. I had the light on the wrong side last time. No problem. I can just cover that up with my gray marker. Just adds in to some more reflection, which is kind of cool. Okay, so then her flesh is a little pinky. I'm going to make her lips red. And look, look at that. Try to get it closer. Light's a little blown out. There we go. So she's still a little bit pasty. I'm gonna add some more white down here. I'm leaving some dark here. That's kind of her collarbone. Top of her shoulder, sculpting that a little bit. Okay, and then when that dries, I'm gonna come over with a color and see what happens. In the meantime, I wanna, this is a pretty dark um, area, so I'm gonna get some colored pencil and work on that. I'll be right back. Okay, I am having a lot of fun and you are missing a lot of the action. I'm adding some lighter tones to the chair, this sort of Adirondack chair. And got a little shadow, which I'm just going to leave for now. There we go. So you don't really see that. Now, the colored pencil that I went to get, you know, don't be afraid to try something. Like, put the color in and say, do I like it? Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, if I didn't like it, I can always just change it, change another color that that little bit of color isn't going to make a whole lot of difference. But I'm basically warming up this purple that I had as the undertone. Okay, I can even try putting a little bit on that white out marker. Here we go. Look at that. She's coming to life, baby. She's coming to life. Okay, now I got to make her skin tones. Definitely got to warm them up. So I'm going to try this. This is pretty bright pink. Let's see if I can find one that's a little bit more chill. Oh, maybe not that one. Okay, hold on. Need another color. Okay, I tried several different colors and I feel like there's a lot of pink in here. So I wanted to go, I tried going with a little bit more of a yellowy orange tone. So it's warming up her flesh so she doesn't look quite so pasty looking, but it's not quite as pink, which I think is a good idea. There's a lot of pink in there. So you can see how I'm warming her up. So she looks like a human. And I can even put a little color in her cheeks. She looks even better and maybe a little pinky in the light. There we go. She's looking pretty good. Okay, my motel sign, I think I'm gonna ring that with a dark, dark tone. I put in the letters. And I'm making them kind of worn and uneven. And the L's crooked. Give it the general effect of decrepitude. Uh, 
And then I'll make a little bit of thicker on this side so it looks like it's in perspective. A little bit more. Yeah, good. <laughs> okay. All right, I, there's more I can do, but I, I'm pretty happy um, down here. Okay, let me show you one more, one more thing before I go. Like I like the grass to break this little planter box that I put down here. So I'm gonna just make some little spiky grassy things with my white out. I'm gonna put a couple over here, for good measure. Maybe there's some growing up in the parking lot side of the building. I often put them at the base of things because it just softens and softens the line where it's hitting the ground. Also adds to the general decrepitude that I mentioned before. Also gonna make this a little darker in here. So that really pops out. Yeah, look at that, look at that. She's come a long way, hasn't she? Um, now this is gonna be dry in a second and I can add the green. I can add blue to her little uh, glasses. I can also do a little bit more pop color if I want to, light. Really make those sunglasses shine, baby. There we go, all kinds of action in there. And if I don't like it, I can just make it dark again. Green, covering my grass, grassiness. So it's not white anymore, now it's green. And I can come in with some darker green, marker or colored pencil. That's blue. in the dark. That's green. Check it out. See that? Totally increase the contrast and add texture however I want to. Pretty great. Okay, I think I think she's good. I mean, I can definitely do more, um, but I'll leave you with that much. But here's the deal, people. Don't give up on your artwork too soon. Sometimes you got to work through something. Make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. <laughs> Um, and, and definitely bring in mixed media on top of watercolor, which is really, really fun. Like as long as there's breath in your body and your paper holds out, you can keep working and trying to make it, make it right. And making a correction sometimes is an opportunity. Something happens, something fun happens. You, you don't really know until you get in there and try it. You know, you're not sure about your color, try it. Just do a little bit and it adds in to the general chaos, confusion and delight. So that's it. Um, I might do some more and I'll probably post it somewhere. So hang in there. Don't be your own worst critic. Okay. Artconspiracy.net. See you next time. <laughs>